Um, all right, I'm going to cut to you guys right away without further ado and see what questions you guys have. What do you do? What can, what can Gary Kent do to become the captain? Or a lieutenant, at least. <laughs> I have to believe somewhere, somewhere floating around the animal quadrant, he's out there as a, well, at least close to a captain now. He's got to be, right? He's got to be. I don't know. What's the other one? Gave a gift to all of those who struggle with multicultural identity and finding themselves. You, Jerry Ryan, gave a gift to many people by encouraging civic engagement. Um, I was wondering what is something that you feel that you gave to Seven, and what is a gift that you feel that Seven, across the entire storyline, has given to you? Wow. Um, that's a good question. It's a gift that I gave to Seven. Uh, sticking with her. <laughs> I guess. Um, and uh, yeah, following along with her and um, staying with all of her adventures. And a gift that she gave to me. There were a lot, honestly. I mean, this character, I've said it a lot, but this character really was a gift from day one. Um, as an actor and, and eventually as a interacting more with fans and her and talk to more of you guys. Um, hearing from the people that related to her, she mentioned um, people on the autism spectrum, LGBTQ plus people, um, people who struggle in other ways, to feel like they just don't quite fit in, they can't quite find a place. Um, and I love that connection that I've gotten through seven. And she also, you know, it was a way to when I started playing seven, my son was very young. He was a freak. Um, and he's on the autism spectrum. And so I was able to learn from him and draw on his experiences to, to bring to the character a bit. So that was also another conclusion. But in season three, when all of the next gen cast came in, because I've known these guys forever, you know. Um, I knew them back when I was on Voyager, way before we actually worked together, and several of them have worked with his directors over the years, Lavar and Gracie. Um, and so getting to actually be on the set and act with them was really fun. It was a treat. It was chaos, and it was really fun. Thank you, first of all, for all your vocal, political voices, how you're posting them. I really appreciate that. Um, my question is about uh, Seven's character from Voyager and like your ending and ending game, really just a closure character on my opinion while I loved it. You got to revisit her game from the heart. Do you feel like behind the Star Trek is really giving her a gift to the storyline? So you should probably like, maybe like see her or something else Star Trek do. About Voyager? I... I mean, I love the storyline that they gave her over the three years of the card. I love her art. I love the struggles that she had been to and survived, been through and survived. And um, coming out as captain was, was very, very cool. And I think a beautiful circle moment with that character. Um, Voyager, I was fine with it, really, because I didn't. I know a lot of people that over the years were not happy because they wanted to see what happened once they got back to the Delta Quadrant and got back to her. I was less interested in playing that through just because the way we found out that Seven's story went at that point was you know, she and she went to get married and whatever. And I was like, I don't need to watch her set up. Was like, that's not, I don't need to do that. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's great, whatever, fine. But that wasn't as interesting for me to play. Um, so coming back so many years later and revisiting and seeing what she had been through in the intermittent time, I think this was really easy. Thank you. Jerry Ryan, it's a pleasure to get to speak with you. I, uh, I'm a super fan, so I, I really enjoyed you as a litigator in Shark. I, I thought that series got canceled way too early. I got it on DVD. Uh, I thought you were hilarious in The Last Man. And so that I got that at home. I thought that was just great early stuff. These are the deep times. Oh, I, Thank you. I got the whole collection. So, um, really, it's it's amazing work that you do. And, and like I said earlier, the things for the community and all that. Um, amazing vampire in Dracula 2000. That's one of my favorite scenes. The reporter scene, I won't say the line, but I, I 
that's my question. Um, how did the training for Zukatsu you got to work with Dwayne Johnson no. early in his career? I think it was ninety seven in uh, Zukatsu. And what did the training involve in that? And uh, what was it like working with him then versus uh, maybe any inter interactions you had? That was that was really fun. This was back when you know Dwayne Johnson was the Rock, right? Yeah. This was back when he was a wrestler, and so this was one of his very first acting jobs when he was in the Air Force. But um, and I didn't know who he was. I didn't follow wrestling, but I just knew that all the prosthetic makeup dudes were super excited. <laughs> and the Rock is coming, and so we go into our first rehearsal, um, fight rehearsal or stunt rehearsal or something, and he comes in and he's just. This most down to earth, just sweet guys. We were talking about our kids, and he was just so sweet. Um, so that was kind of the only experience of waiting that I knew, right? And so then when we shoot, we had a great time, he was lovely. Um, and so when he was done, <laughs> he left me an autographed picture of him as The Rock. And it said, The Rock smells what you're cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Make a guy's like, no, dude, that's his thing, you know, it's the rock, it's the lizard's thing. Like, okay, cool, great. But, but he was so sweet and lovely, and, and uh, I've run into him a couple times over the years at different events, and he's just as lovely as he was. He's a very sweet guy. So, as a gay man, who grew up on the track in the 80s and 90s, um, this most recent uh, Zoom Cats Am I hosting you if I do this? Not really, I guess 